Hello everybody, it's Natalie with Hearts Desire Spice Blends here with another installment of Easy Weeknight Cooking, tonight with spaghetti. It's definitely a household staple, no matter which way you cut it. And oftentimes, what do we do? We go to the store, we get a jar, we dump it into a pan and cook some pasta. Well, how about something that tastes a little bit better than that without much of the fuss that goes with doing everything from scratch and letting it cook for hours and so that's what we're giving you tonight easy weeknight cooking presents best spaghetti dinner and so what we've got going tonight is a really easy uh, spaghetti recipe and we're gonna start off with canned tomatoes an onion some Italian sausage you can pick sweet, mild, or hot. It really depends on you. You can even go for ground beef uh, if you don't want a whole lot of the extra flavor that comes from the Italian sausage. Me, I find it makes the dish, absolutely makes the dish. But then again, I'm a flavor hound. I go after the flavor like nobody's business. But uh, so we've got ourselves a pound of Italian sausage. Now this is made with the, uh, with the Heart's Desires Down Home Italian sausage blend earlier today. And that is two tablespoons for a pound of ground pork or whatever other meat you've got on hand. I prefer the pork in this because it's got a little extra fat in it and that brings flavor. We've got two cans of tomato sauce, one can of diced tomatoes and one can of tomato paste. You don't have to cook tomatoes for hours on this. It takes about half an hour at most. We have an onion extra garlic because it's my family, right? Italian herbs. And a wee bit of sugar, my domains. Why sugar? Because it actually counteracts some of the acidity that comes from the tomatoes. And so we just add enough to make the sugar bowl screen and then take it away. Uh, and also what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a, an amyled an enameled cast iron pan with this. I love my cast iron. It's really great stuff. And why am I using enameled cast iron? Because tomatoes react with the iron and often you can actually strip the seasoning on one of your pans and you know kind of flavor your dish with a little extra iron. Sometimes that's not a bad thing but I prefer the enameled cast iron. It's a lot easier to clean. It doesn't strip the seasoning off of my cast iron and hey I get more kitchen toys. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, what do we do first? We need our Italian sausage and our onion. And we're going to go ahead and dice that onion as finely as you like or as your family likes. So, that's what we got going here. Guys, go ahead and make, let me know if you want in the comments. And uh, give me a hard time, I'll give you one back. It's a lot of fun. Meanwhile, we are going to start the chubby chubby. We are getting, getting this party started. Yes. So, of course, start off with cutting your onion in half, uh, leaving, of course, the root end, which didn't stay on this half, but did stay on this half. Leave the root end because that's a wonderful little handle. I love it. It makes uh, cutting the onions a little less hazardous to one's fingers. And go ahead and strip the first layer or two of the paper off. We're going to use this entire onion tonight. And a lot of the recipes that you see, unless you're cooking for more than just one or two, you're going to use only a part of a small onion. And this one, you're going to use a whole shebang. So, let's hope that this isn't as strong of an onion as I've been getting recently. And let's see if my, how my eyes tolerate this. So, Go ahead and dice as coarsely or as finely as you like. And when that thing starts tipping, go ahead and uh, flop it over. And my eyes are already starting the, the waterworks. Wow. Okay. I've been getting some good onions recently. I'll tell you that much right now. Woohoo! Whoa. Ah, love it. You know, one of these days I will find out what the secret is that uh, all of these uh, TV cooks use other than cutting the ones before. <laughs> okay, and 
the root in and put that guy aside. Aha. Okay, put the knife aside and we are going to start this on high over here. And I am going to, excuse me, I'm going to give you a nice shot of that pan so you can see a stuff. And I am on high on in the front and I'm going to actually adjust this a little bit more. There we go. And uh, sometimes you're going to want to put a little bit of oil in here. Sometimes you are not. It really kind of depends on how fatty your sausage is. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have some fun with this. Tonight, I've got some pretty fatty sausage, so I really don't think we need any extra oil. I'm going to put my sausage in first, and then I, then just barely after the, the onions, I'm going to mix that up and let it brown. Then we're going to put in, yes, we're going to put in the uh, tomato paste next, and we're going to brown that. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So, I've got my handy dandy little spatula. I love this thing. And do, 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 do. we've got, we are actually getting a little, we are warming up over here. It's not particularly warm yet, but we are warming up. Okay. Ooh, bit of spices that didn't make it in there. Oh, get back in there. <laughs> I love me my spices. Stay in my food. Oh. <laughs> Such a fast to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, take care of that. And I'm going to, you can already hear a little bit of that sizzle. Go ahead and break that up real quick. Sometimes it's fun to stab your fingers in the pan. All right. <laughs> and throw in your onions. Messy cook. I am throwing things all over the place. There we go. Now, that's one thing. You know, I seriously get into my work. Absolutely. The kitchen shows it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to break up the sausage a bit more. Now, you can use... Um, you can use ground sausage like this. You can use the sausage links if you like. I would recommend that if you're using sausage links, um, if you want the casing on there and you want them to stay in, in rounds, then you're going to microwave them just barely enough to, to get them a little bit firm and then cut them and throw them in and brown them. Okay. I think you can see some of this, guys. Guys, let me know if you need a little bit more of uh, the view on things. Let me see here. Yes, I can see comments there. Let me know if you need a little bit more of the view on these. I can adjust the camera at any time. And if you're catching the replay, go ahead and leave comments, and that will be a learning experience for moi. Okay, we are getting some good browning going on there. I can actually turn it down just a wee bit. Now, what we're doing on the bottom here is we're developing some browning on not only the meat, but we're also developing some browning on the bottom of the pan. Not burning, browning. And that, my dear, is called fawn. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's basically the Maillard reaction sticking to the bottom of the pan. The Maillard reaction is basically when anything browns, it actually changes the flavor just a little bit. And uh, that's a little bit of the Maillard reaction uh, with your food sticking to the bottom of the pan. And what we're going to do that later is we're going to put in enough liquid so that we can lift that browning up off the bottom of the pan and it tastes fabulous in the rest of your food. Okay, now we need our tomato paste. Definitely. There we are. And get that on in there. Now, what we're going to do here is we are actually going to brown our tomato paste. And the reason why we do that is to develop some of that cooked tomato flavor 
and start actually getting some of that caramelization that happens when you brown uh, your tomato paste. And it actually creates just a wonderful flavor. That with everything else on the bottom of the pan, when we actually start putting our tomato sauce and stuff like that in there, it's going to be absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. So you go ahead and stir that tomato paste in there. And uh, squish everything to the bottom. Go ahead and break it up. That way you get a whole lot of contact between the tomato paste and the bottom of the pan. Now, I so we're looking for the tomato paste to start changing color just a little bit. And that is going to be some of that magic that happens here. Now this doesn't happen, this doesn't take a terrible long time to happen. It actually can happen rather quickly depending on the heat in your pan. So uh, let me see here. I cannot see, uh, pack my light on your, uh, on the display there, but there we are. And I am smelling it already. So now is the time. We get some of our tomato sauce in there and start cleaning up on the bottom of that pan. Tomato sauce going in. Yes. Now this is going to kind of soak a little bit. We are going to stir the tomato paste into the tomato sauce and as the tomato sauce kind of sits in there a little bit and we get that tomato paste and sauce all uh, put together, you're going to see as you swipe the bottom of your pan, the bottom of the pan becomes cleaner. You want this without, without stuff on the bottom of the pan burning. Very, very good thing is not to let it burn. Matter of fact, at this point you can turn down the heat quite a bit. scraping up the brown bits on the bottom of the pan as we incorporate the uh, everything in here. Scrape up those brown bits because otherwise they will burn. Absolutely burn. Well, I told you I was a messy cook. <laughs> stuff. It is starting to look really good. You've got a nice thick sauce going on here. I love that. What I really don't like is a weak and runny tomato sauce when it comes to spaghetti. I want this stuff to stick to the noodles big time. And go ahead and continue getting all that wonderful fond off the bottom of the pan. And uh, we are not burning at the moment. This is good. And I, it is time for our third can. This stuff, it looks absolutely wonderful and rich and red. Just gorgeous. stages is always a really great idea because I uh, you know trying to do this all at once so you will know, create a lot more splashes and you've gotten you get to control a little bit more of the texture that you're looking for if you want a much more thick texture then you can go ahead and stop you know at some of the uh, some without you know some of the tomato sauce or something like that if you want to really if you want a thinner texture, then you're going to be, uh, you know, adding a little bit more sauce. So now, what's the next thing? We need to throw in the rest of our ingredients, right? And knowing my family, garlic is definitely at the top of the list. And honestly, I should have done this while I was browning everything. So if you're gonna add extra garlic, that's definitely the time to do it, is when everything is browning. That way you get all those wonderful flavors. 
And one more, because we are garlic lovers. There we go. And pull out that skin. Pull off all that wonderful stuff. Stir it in. There's still a little bit of fun on the bottom of the pan that we're going to scrape up. Oh, yum! All right. Now, we need to add in our Italian herbs, and we are going to be adding in one tablespoon of our Italian herbs. Just go ahead and pour it right on, on there. There we go. And if you add a little extra, I doubt anybody's gonna die. And, uh, there's that. And a lot of people go, wait a minute, Natalie, that was a little bit light on that stuff, don't you think? The answer is no. And the reason why is, you know, this brand is just so powerful. Absolutely powerful. And yeah, you can add extra, but you know, the days of needing half the jar are just about gone when you're using the Heart's Desire stuff. And it just does give you a ton of flavor for that itty bitty size. So we are, I'm going to grab the lid to this real quick. And let you see what I'm up to. This is what we're using tonight, the Italian herbs. And you can see all sorts of really great stuff in there. We already have some of our onion and uh, garlic in there. And what's more, we also have fennel black pepper and celery seed in there. So it's a really full flavor compound. And uh, we need our sugar. We need about a half a teaspoon of sugar. Like I said, just show, show it the uh, sugar bowl and let it drain. So half a teaspoon of sugar for this whole pot is not much. That's all you need right there. stir. Look at that. Isn't that great? That's beautiful stuff. Absolutely gorgeous. You guys need to see this better. I'm going to move that and let you guys come on over here. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? You know, you just try. I dare you. Try getting this out of a, a jar. It doesn't work. It does not work. And it's beautiful. Nice and thick. You've not been cooking it for you know umpteen million hours, and you still have a lot of that fresh flavor coming out of here. You've got that Italian sausage that adds just so much body. You've got the Italian herbs, and we're going to let this simmer for 10 to 15 minutes while everything gets really good and friendly. And so no better time to discuss a few other things. I'm going to move you guys back over here. There we are. So a few other things we're going to be discussing tonight is what to do, what to do now that you've got that cooking. You can use this base in your lasagna. You can use it in any, any sort of dish you like. You can use it as a base for, you know, a, uh, an Italian country style gravy, uh, which is always you know, very tomato based. My father absolutely loves his recipe for this. And yes, it's cooking for hours. He uses country ribs, two kinds of Italian sausage, the whole nine yards. But uh, tonight what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be using spaghetti squash with this. And this is gonna be fun. So I'm gonna grab a fork. here. Maybe I ought to bring you guys a little closer. What do you think? I'm not so sure that's going to work. There we go. 
So, hello again. I'm going to tilt you guys down a bit so you can see this spaghetti squash. Now, I had this in the oven. Uh, this one has cooled. I had it in the oven for, I believe, about an hour. And now, each spaghetti squash is going to be a little different, how big they are, the whole nine yards, but about 350. And the great thing about spaghetti squash is when you pull it out of its shell, it's like spaghetti. So one of the things I want to do real soon is get another one of these guys and show you how to bake the spaghetti squash with that stuff in the middle. So basically what you're going to do is right now I, I'm actually pulling this apart so I can use this as spaghetti. And uh, so what you can do is you, of course, uh, de-seed your spaghetti squash. And I'm going to make this a little easier to deal with. There we go. Look at that. It looks like spaghetti. Seriously, it does. That's why it got its name. And uh, you de-seed it. And then after, you know, you can probably do it beforehand too. I've not really tested this. But what you can do is take your other half, and I'm going to test it before it's been baked. I'm going to line this cavity after it's been deseeded with our spaghetti sauce, and then bake the whole thing there with Parmesan and a little bit of a little bit of mozzarella, and that ought to be really good. But tonight, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to pull this apart, and uh, I'm going to use this instead of spaghetti. Go ahead and pull that apart. We will have some sort of a film where I basically, along the edges where it got dried out in the oven, you're going to have a little bit of a film there. Go ahead and pull this apart with a fork. There we go. Now I have friends who have used just maple sugar and maple syrup and butter on spaghetti squash, and you know their kids absolutely love it. And so go ahead and just pull that apart. Do, 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 do. This is the time to get messy. Seriously, great time to get messy. Mm. Beautiful. And then, bring over your bowl. And go ahead and give yourself a bit of a, a bed of that spaghetti squash. Side. Doesn't that look great? It is time for the messy pit to clean up. There we go. Now, cleaning up while you're cooking always beats the heck out of cleaning up after you're done cooking something like this. You know, always a good idea. going to go aside, as are these, and these. Now that is smelling really good right over there. So I think we need to back up and check it out. So what do we got here? We got some really good stuff and a messy stuff. certainly bubbling away. Look at that. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh the smell. Oh yum. I wish you guys could smell this. We, we ser seriously need smell-o-vision. Oh my word. 
definitely need smell vision you know, if, if they actually perfect that, you know, this, this is going to be just wonderful. If I remember correctly, way back in the 50s or 60s, there was such a thing as smell -o vision They tried it in um, movie theaters for the first times. And they basically had a bunch of perfumes that they would eject into the air. And after a while, you know, the, the perfumes would accumulate. And after a while, you know, people started getting sick from all the smells. <laughs> you know, the, the combinations of smells are very, very important. And they, they are in the spice world, too. Uh, that's why, you know, you smell with, you, you taste with your nose first. Absolutely. And so, on a tangent, I will always say that, in general, it something will smell how it tastes so if you want to see if something needs more of X Y or Z you grab X Y or Z open it up and put your nose over your pot and smell whatever it is that you're thinking of putting in there if the two go together well perfect put some in if they do not not so much so uh, this looks like it is just about done Let's go ahead and try putting some over here. Oh my goodness gracious, this is so good. That is not the right tool. But I have the right tool right here. Check that out. Oh yeah, baby. Sweet. And that is a bit too warm still. Get over there. Look at this. That is gorgeous. The next thing we need, a little bit of mozzarella cheese. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course, your Parmesan. not beautiful or what I mean seriously that looks fabulous and it smells incredible so you know just picking it up like this you know you see that cheese melting already oh yes and so gotta try this smell bite mm. gooey cheese <laughs> Pardon me while I eat. Oh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> ah, you can tell Natalie has very little in the way of filters right now. <laughs> Some people call it fun. I call it me. Anyway, so there you have it. The best spaghetti dinner. And you know what? I forgot to put this in the comments. So what I'm going to do is, hello. Okay. There we go. Oh, that didn't work. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to do it this way. I've got my computer right here. And uh, that is off. Oh, it would be nice. Okay, and what we're going to do with this recipe is we're also giving you a recipe for garlic bread. Herbed garlic bread with this Italian. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So, I'm gonna find the video real quick on the laptop. You can hear my little darling. And. Wait, somebody needs to be sing singing the Jeopardy theme song right now. Seriously, absolutely. Okay, we've got that. Do, 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 do,
Alrighty, where are the videos? I need my videos. And I found it. Sweets! Okay. And at least I think it's working. Aha! Yes. And there we have the recipe. So guys, from our kitchen to yours, welcome back to the Blending Kitchen. Welcome back to Easy Weeknight Cooking with Heart's Desire Spice Blends. Have fun, make it easy, and keep things tasty. Have a great night, and I will see you next week.